Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we have another 10 meter radio to show you. Now this time this is called a Titan from Moonraker here in the UK. Now this is a 30 watt all mode 10 meter radio out of the box, but it can also support the CB radio bands and even the 12 meter handband. Now the Titan is super compact, which you might find quite attractive for a vehicle installation is it doesn't really take up too much room. Also, the cost of this radio is currently at around 130 UK pounds, so it's proper cheap. Now you do get all the usual accessories you might find with a radio like this. That's a power cable, a mounting bracket with, of course, the hardware screws, and of course, a microphone. Now the microphone itself has four front-facing buttons along with a PTT down the left side. And we'll take a look at that in a moment to see what each of those buttons do. Now, the front of the radio has a rather interesting design with the curved windows for the channel and frequency display, along with SWR and power meters. Now, there's also five main rotary controls on the front and eight push buttons. Now, the microphone connects to the left side of this radio, and it appears to be one of those standard four pin microphone sockets like we've seen on other CB radios. Now on the rear, a fairly chunky heatsink along with an SO239 socket, which is obviously used for the antenna. There's also a power socket to be used with a supplied power cable. And then there's two 3.5 millimeter sockets, one labeled as SP for speaker and the other labeled as CW, which one can only assume that you could use a Morse key for when using CW. Now there also appears to be an RJ11 style socket which can be used with a programming cable and suitable software for reprogramming those memory channels. However, I do not have either of those to test, so I won't be able to show you that in this video. Now this RJ11 style socket can apparently also be used as a remote microphone socket. Again, I don't have any wiring details on this to test it. Now the main output speaker is located underneath, so something to consider if you're gonna install this in your shack or vehicle. Now, if you ever come across these little foam or rubber circles in your hardware kits for your mobile radios, well, these are for attaching to the bracket so that you do not end up scratching the sides as you take the radio in and out of it. Now, you probably already knew that, but if you didn't, well, that's what they're for. In fact, I've seen some people actually stick them on the radio instead of the bracket. Okay, so let's hook up the power cable to my shack supply, connect an antenna, and then go through the features and functions of this Moonraker Titan. So over on the bottom left, we have a dual barrel control, which is the on and off as well as volume. Now the outer barrel is for adjusting the squelch level. The next double barrel control is for adjusting the receive sensitivity, or in other words, RF gain. And the other is to adjust the RF power output, which only works on AM and FM. Now the larger central knob is for changing channel or frequency. And then the burn control to the right of this will either change the band or mode of modulation. To change bands, you press the band control once and then turn it as that control is also a push switch. Now the rotary control furthest to the right is a clarifier, which adjusts the frequency in small steps. Now you can lock the receive and transmit frequencies so they both adjust at the same time, or you can adjust it so the receive and transmit frequencies are independent depending on how this is set up within the menu, which I'll show you in a moment. As this mentioned, the Titan does have a set of menu options that can be changed. Now to access that menu, simply hold down the funk button on the top left. Now let's just go through, there are 27 options available. Number one sets the echo time. Yep, this radio does have an echo feature for you CB radio enthusiasts. Number two sets the echo depth. Number three sets the audio high cut, and that's on or off. Four controls the LCD brightness level. Five alters the tuning step size, ranging from 10 kilohertz to one megahertz. Six configures the clarify control. Now here you can choose to set the clarifier to adjust only the receive frequency or just the transmit frequency or both at the same time. Seven turns on or off the automatic squelch. A is for setting the timeout timer, so this radio will stop transmitting after a set amount of time. Now this is useful if you're prone to sitting on your microphone and accidentally transmitting. 
Number nine sets the scan type when activated using the front panel scan button. And 10 enables or disables SWR protection when using CW mode. In fact, 11, 12, 13, and 14 enables or disables the SWR protection for all of the modes, i.e. AM, FM, upper sideband, and even lower sideband. Number 15 enables or disables PSU voltage protection, that's the power supply protection. Number 16 changes what is displayed during transmit on the screen, choosing from SWR to power to even transmit frequency. 17 sets the Roger Beep tone, and you can choose anywhere between 300 hertz to three kilohertz. Now 18 sets the Roger Beep holding time or duration, and 19 sets the TX single tone frequency. Not entirely sure what that is. Now 20 adjusts talkback, and that's on or off. Now this is where you can hear your own audio playing through the speaker when you're transmitting. 21 sets the amplitude modulation mic gain or AM mic gain. 22 is the FM mic gain level. 23 upper sideband mic gain level. 24 lower sideband mic gain level. Now 25 sets the beep prompt level. Now I always turn these as low as possible because I hate radios beeping as you're pressing buttons. However, I can understand that some people will like that. 26 adjusts the CW filter and 27 sets the SWR protection level. Now the Titan comes shipped as a dedicated 10 meter radio. And as mentioned earlier, you can access the CB band. Now if you hold the EMG button in and the PTT on the mic while powering on all at the same time, you'll get presented with an option where you can turn the center dial to change from a dedicated 10 meter radio to full coverage radio from 25 to 30 megahertz or just the CB band. In fact, there's a few different options there that you can play around with. Once you have selected one, you just press the PTT microphone quickly and the radio will restart into that selected band. Now if we take a moment to check the power output on the 10 meter band with this Titan radio, we can see a clear 40 watts when using FM. And we see around 15 watts when using AM. And if we flick over to upper sideband, we still get a good 40 watts at the peak. Now I am going into a domo load here, so I also checked the 11 meter band. Now I observed a good 40 watts using FM on 27 megahertz as well. Now the RF power control does work with AM and FM. And as you can see here, it's kind of linear until we get down to around 25%. Then it kind of gets a bit jumpy. But I don't think it's too much of an issue as long as you're not using this with an amp, which has a critical input level. So I also recorded what the audio sounded like on SSB and FM. And well, take a listen to this. This is a M0 DQW testing mic zero Delta Quebec whiskey. Just testing the audio on upper sideband on the Moonraker Titan M0 DQW testing audio. One, two, three, four, five, over. This is M0 DQW just testing FM, testing the FM audio on the Moonraker Titan. This is M0 DQW testing FM audio on the Moonraker Titan. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Now I don't think it sounded too bad. I've definitely heard worse on other radios. Of course, the radio was connected to my antenna while making those recordings, so a full 40 watts was coming from the radio, and my SDR receiver was only a metre or so away from the radio. Now, the FM transmitted audio, I did think it had good clarity, but in my opinion, it was too quiet. Now, I did check the FM mic gain control, and that was set to maximum. Maybe this radio needs a good power microphone to get those audio levels a bit higher. Who knows? So lastly, let's take a look inside as I'm sure some of you fine folks will want to see the gubbings. Now it looks rather clean and it's nice to see a PCB actually taking up the whole space of the chassis. Unlike some other radios where we've seen in the past 
where the PCB was less than half the size of the chassis, leaving a massive open space. Now, while the bottom of the case was off, I did notice what appeared to be a couple of jumpers there on the top left. Again, I'm not sure what these are, but if you know, then let us know down in the comments. Please, no guessing, we need to know what they are, not what you think they may be. And if you do leave a comment guessing that it's a special feature to activate a time machine, then your comment will be removed from existence. For those wondering if I tested the CW feature, eh, sorry, I did not, as I did not have a key to use with the radio. So my final thoughts on this radio is, well, it's cheap and you kind of get what you pay for. It's a great entry level radio into 10 meter sideband if that's what you want to do. But if you want something more refined, then you're going to have to spend a lot more money. Until the next video, take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.